the bull market's back, and I'm on the hunt for the best crypto sector. If you've been around the crypto space for as long as I have, you'll know that a bad project in a hot sector does way better than a good project in a poor sector. So to maximize our profits, I'm gonna analyze all the sectors out there. And today we're focusing on the real world assets or RWAs sector. I'll share some pros and cons. I'll share some projects you could invest in and I'll rank it versus all the other sectors out there. So without further ado, let's get started with the pros, AKA the case for real world assets. The first reason why I'm so bullish on RWAs is that it has the largest total addressable market out of all the sectors out there. This is because so many things are considered real world assets, right? I'm talking real estate, commodities, precious metals, stocks, bonds, and even artwork. So if we brought in even a tiny fraction of those things, then that would forever transform the crypto world in a good way. Just think about this. The total trading volume of all global commodities was a staggering $4.8 trillion in 2020. So if we tokenize just 5% of that and brought it on chain, then we'd see an additional $240 billion worth of trading volume. And that's just from commodities. But here's the thing. This sector is not only about taking liquidity from traditional finance, and bringing it to crypto. It's about unlocking and creating brand new sources of liquidity as well. For example, certain types of assets like real estate and art are generally harder to sell and have higher barriers to entry, right? But with tokenization, everyone can get involved even with limited funds. One project that does this exact thing is called Galileo Protocol. It enables the creation and purchase of PNFTs that are linked to real world assets. And that provides additional liquidity to what were once highly illiquid markets. Anyways, the takeaway here is that this sector is gonna bring in a tidal wave of fresh liquidity that wasn't here before. And perhaps that's why BCG, the world's largest management consulting firm, is predicting that the sector will become a $16 trillion opportunity by 2030. Now, BCG's prediction definitely makes me bullish, but what makes me feel even more bullish is my next pro, which is all the financial juggernauts that have been exploring the space. Back in October, BlackRock carried out the first live tokenized collateral settlement through JP Morgan's Onyx blockchain. Following that trade, JP Morgan's representative said that the tokenization of money market funds presents a quote, faster, more cost-effective way of meeting margin requirements. So obviously they're interested, but then you've also got financial giants like Franklin Templeton and Wisdom Tree exploring the sector. And the former controls a staggering 1.5 trillion in assets under management. There's also Bank of America, the second largest US bank, calling RW a tokenization, a quote, key driver of digital asset adoption. So with all these TradFi giants getting involved, you'd be a fool to bet against the sector. Anyways, the next reason I'm bullish on the sector has to do with its fundamental advantages over regular crypto assets. One such advantage is that tokenized RWAs offer real and sustainable yields compared to most DeFi protocols out there. Remember during the last bull market, how a lot of DeFi 2.0 projects were promising sky high APYs? Like Olympus DAO, for example, they offered over 7,000 APY back in 2021. And that was crazy to see. However, most of those yields from those projects were circular and backed by thin air. So a lot of them ultimately collapsed or at least dropped way down to a level where they're no longer interesting. But unlike DeFi protocols, tokenized assets can offer sustainable yields, such as treasury bills, dividends from tokenized stocks, or a cut of rental income. One example of this is Ondo Finance, which lets you earn yield from treasuries or corporate bonds on your USDC stablecoins. And this could actually be a smart move because treasury yields are currently higher than the stablecoin yields on many top DeFi protocols. For example, the two-year treasury yield is currently at 4.45%, while staking USDC pays between 1.29 to 4.26%, depending on the protocol. So yeah, these RWA projects are offering the same, if not higher yields than regular DeFi projects, but with less risk. So you can see why many investors could find them more attractive. Now, beyond just yields, another huge advantage of these RWAs is that they're just safer and less volatile than normal crypto assets. For example, tokenized gold or tokenized Coca-Cola stocks, those aren't going anywhere and they're not gonna rug pull you like some AI crypto project made by some anonymous 13 year old developer. Anyways, the takeaway here is that all these advantages will make it more amenable for new investors to enter crypto through this sector 
rather than other ones. And that is a reason to be bullish if I've ever seen one. Now, here's the thing. So far, we've only been talking about hypotheticals in terms of why this sector is promising. But my next pro is the fact that this sector's potential is backed by the stats. During 2022, the total value locked in DeFi dropped 70% to a low of $49 billion in June of that year. But investors didn't just leave completely. Many of them went to safer alternatives, such as tokenized real world assets. We can see this in the data, which shows that this sector's on-chain value grew by 1.05 billion in 2023, with treasuries and bonds growing by an astonishing 557 million. On-chain private credit loans also rose by 210 million this year, and all this growth happened during the tail end of a particularly nasty bear market, which makes it even more impressive. Now, another bullish view of the data is the fact that the top four RWA lending protocols ranked among the top 10 of all DeFi lending protocols at the end of January. More specifically, TrueFi, Maple Finance, Goldfinch, and Centrifuge all entered the top 10, with the value of their cumulative active loans exceeding 326 million. So when you consider that most of these projects have a market cap of under 1 billion, heck, some even under 100 million, you can see why they have massive upside. Ultimately, this sector is still a small one. So with their current growth trajectory, they look on track to outpace the broader DeFi sector. Okay, so I bet you're super bullish after hearing all those pros. But before we get to my thought-provoking cons, I wanna share with you a special limited time Christmas deal. Just for this week, if you wanna buy our Coinsider tokenomics rubric, you can get 25% off with the code Xmas23. I mean, it's already only $9.95, but with this code, it'll be even cheaper. Now, if you don't know what the heck I'm talking about, just watch my Caspa tokenomics analysis live stream that I did a couple weeks ago. But basically you can use this rubric to calculate a comprehensive score for the tokenomics of any coin or token out there. And then you can use that score to compare projects and see which one's more quality. So yeah, that's Xmas 23, go get that ASAP if you're interested. All right, back to the cons or the case against real world assets. And my first point is that there's a lot of regulatory uncertainty surrounding the sector. This is one of the biggest obstacles in the way of this sector's success. Why? Well, because institutional investors are extremely risk averse compared to us crypto degens. According to an EY Parthenon survey, 49% of institutional investors said that regulatory uncertainty is the primary perceived obstacle to tokenization. And I think their concerns are legitimate because the SAC is extremely likely to classify all tokenized real world assets as securities. And while the EU is generally considered more crypto friendly, their new Mika bill provides little clarity on tokenized RWAs. So yet again, more uncertainty. Honestly, as long as there's no regulatory clarity for the sector, it's essentially dead on arrival as it needs institutional buy-in for it to succeed. I mean, you aren't going to see retail aping into most of these real world assets after all. We're all too busy buying meme coins these days. Anyhow, while regulatory uncertainty is a huge roadblock for the sector, it may not be as pressing of a concern compared to my next point, which is the fact that all these TradFi firms who say they're interested in tokenized RWAs may end up building their own centralized platforms instead of using public ones. You see, with decentralized permissionless blockchains, it's very hard for institutions to enforce compliance. So large TradFi players are likely to opt for private permission chains where they can do things like roll back transactions or enforce KYC. After all, compliance is one of the top priorities of TradFi firms, even above optimizing for profits, since failing to maintain compliance could lead to some massive fines that could put them out of business. So yeah, if you look at it through that lens, you can see why many of them are choosing their own permission chains instead of using the public RWA solutions out there. And here's the thing, it's not only compliance. Permission chains also offer significant scalability benefits as well. And this is extremely important because most public blockchains still can't handle the NASDAQ level workloads, right? And this makes them unsuitable for the tokenization projects that aim for that type of scale. This is why BlackRock chose to use JP Morgan's private Onyx chain. And if tokenized RWAs are adopted on those centralized TradFi chains, then there would be little to no opportunity left for us retail investors as those private chains don't have native tokens to invest in. Anyways, even if that ends up not being a problem, still have my next con, which is the fact that building infrastructure for RWAs is an extremely hard task. 
Facilitating communication between on-chain and off-chain environments is particularly difficult, even for today's top Oracle projects. And since Oracles are third-party infrastructure, they also add additional vulnerabilities to RWA protocols, such as price manipulation. Another big hurdle is the issue of ownership for tokenized assets and how that relates to the real-world counterparts. Say that a hacker was to steal a digital token that represents ownership of your house. Would that mean that your actual house now belongs to the hacker? Heck no, that's not how it works in the real world. World, so it can't be true in the RWA world either. But now the question becomes, how do we ensure alignment between these two worlds? Well, let's just say that that's one of the big problems that this sector has to figure out. And this isn't just me tossing around hypothetical FUD, by the way. We've already seen some technical issues pop up with these RWA projects. Back in October, a $20 million tokenized loan soured on Goldfinch, putting $7 million worth of funds at risk. That happens soon after one of Goldfinch's borrowers defaulted on a $5 million loan set to mature earlier in October. And in December of 2022, Orthogonal Trading defaulted on a $36 million Maple Finance loan after the investment firm's funds became tied up in the FTX bankruptcy. So yeah, as you can see, there are a lot of challenges to overcome when it comes to the implementation of RWAs, and they will likely hinder the sector's growth until they're solved. This actually brings me to my next con, which is that some analysts say that this real world assets narrative is too forced, at least for this cycle. The reasoning is that it still lacks the fundamental infrastructure needed and some truly game-changing projects. I mean, honestly, I can see their point. RWAs were already touted as the next best thing in 2021, but the sector didn't perform that well. So perhaps that underperformance has left a sour taste in some investors' mouths, making it need to do more to prove itself before it can really take off. Phew, that was a lot of pros and cons to digest, wasn't it? But now it's time for the fun part, the ranking of the sector against all others. So far we have layer ones as number one and gaming as number two. Well, I gotta put RWAs at number three, and I promise I'm not just ranking them all in order. The next sector will kick one of these out of their spots, I promise you. But I just don't find real world assets to be as promising as layer ones or gaming, at least for this cycle. I mean, I do think it's a legit sector with some promising projects. However, the cons are pretty serious and they do worry me significantly. Next up, I'm gonna analyze DeFi as a sector, so subscribe if you wanna catch that. Otherwise, watch our gaming sector video right here if you want.